the um, the yards that were allowed on the game on the ground against the Dolphins was that yep. one of those things like when you were game planning you were like all right we really don't want to be have the top taken off of us by Waddle and Hill so it's almost like right. we'll give you this because you're not going to get that yeah we we definitely went into the game devoting our resources to the back end and uh, limiting explosives staying on top of those two players because uh, as we all know so explosive so fast to get behind you it is a long day um, that doesn't mean we concede the run game. That doesn't mean that we're we're okay with the yards to get in the run game. Got to play that better. But um, our focus definitely was on the back end. How do you alter it this week when you have two great running backs plus the Hall Yeah, it's uh, it's a tremendous challenge. He's one of the all time greats. Um, yeah, it's it's a balancing act. It's really taking a deep dive into their offense and trying to find our windows to to play what they're playing. At our best, you know, so it's a it's a great challenge for myself as a play caller. It's a great great challenge for this defense. With how well Reed and and Sauce are playing to, to this point, does that I, I know we kind of the thing about McQuinn, oh, you don't want to rush forward, you want to you know, just rush forward, put the rest back. But when you have that kind of ability to seemingly lock down guys on the outside, does that give you more freedom to blitz because you have the, the comfort on the guys outside? A little bit, and a little bit more freedom to play man-to-man, -man, which isn't something that we've majored in here. So it's uh, definitely a luxury. Those two, have, uh, they've come along nicely, still got a long way to go, um, both individually and, and collectively as a, as a corner group. But i um, very happy where they're at right now. It does give you some freedom, though, for sure. What was the thought on using Parks so much? Will? It was, uh, you know, they play, they played big, you know, 21 personnel, 12 personnel, stuff that you don't see from week to week. Um, so we knew we had to get bigger, you know, but at the same time, uh, he gave us that opportunity to, to get bigger but still play our traditional nickel call. So we still had the full playbook available to us. So it was uh, a good combination of both. What do you tell us about a matchup like this? You know, quarterback is what he is, you know what I mean? What, what, are, what are the keys there? What do you tell him? Yeah, it's to him. It's to all our guys. Um, it's a guy that's very hard to trick, you know. So from a pre-snap standpoint, you got to be on your your details as far as your body posture, as far as the look, as far as the, all those things. Like the pre-snap stuff, pre stuff is huge. If he knows the story when the ball's hiked, um, it can be a long day for you, you know. Um, so the pre-snap stuff, I think, is probably the biggest thing. Tell him, but tell all those guys. Did you look at the uh, 49er Packer playoff game in your film study since you guys play a similar scheme to the 49ers? Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's, you know, in the past three years, they played five times. So that's five games of of uh, not only Aaron, but the, the Green Bay offense and Matt LaFleur attacking this system. So, uh, you know, there's some strong indicators in there for sure. There was a, a point last week for, for the Packers when they were playing the Giants where the Giants had some success early and then and then Aaron kind of went directly to just dink and dunk. Like he was kind of killing by a thousand paper cuts, whatever the saying is. How do you stop that when, when he just starts saying, like, all right, we'll go three yards at a time and, and march down the field that way three, four yards at a time? You know, there's, there's a couple different philosophies. I mean, some would say just lock them up and, and play tighter coverage, man, uh, match zone, whatever the case may be. Um, there's others that would say that we're going to not necessarily give that up, but we're going to play on top of that. And when you throw it, we're going to punish you for it. And, and some have the mindset that you don't have the patience as an offensive play caller or as a quarterback like him to do that all, all the way up and down the field. So um, it's somewhere in between. I don't know if I'm answering the question without giving away too much, you know, but it's, uh, I think there's two ways to look at it. You know, there's one way, limit the explosives, stay on top, punish them, they go down low. And then, uh, but I think there's times and there's windows where you just lock them up too. You get um, really tight into coverage and you eliminate everything. What did you see in the second half against the Giants where they were shut out? Uh, and, and how much did you glean out of that? It's hard, you know. Um, Wink Martindale does an amazing job, you know, but his system is very different than ours. So uh, there are some things that we can pull from, there's some things that, that we can take, but. Uh, it's it's very foreign to us from a schematic standpoint. How you guys played in, in London last year. Mm -hmm. The next week, was there some layover? Like, was there some um, I don't want to say jet lag, but like, were you kind of 
a little bit t more tired the second week after you came home from right. London after kind of having to fly home and all that stuff on Monday? In, in all honesty, I didn't feel that. You know, I don't know if that's a byproduct of being that we are so close, you know, as far as uh, proximity wise and, and time zone wise. Like, New York's the best place to be if you're going to have those games. Um, but at the same time, we had a bye too. So, oh, yeah, sure. like, it's, it, it, I don't know exactly what they're going through right now. But uh, there is a challenge to that for sure. How much do you rely on Michael for this week? Maybe just to either, either from a schematic standpoint or just trying to get inside his brother's head a little bit? <laughs> I think there's a, I mean, of course, there's a little bit to that, you know, as there always will be. Um, at the same time, I think that there's some, there's some tremendous value to just going against our offense because there are some similarities, you know, um, schematically, the way they utilize players, the way they utilize guys with certain traits. So our defense is, um, I think there's, there's an advantage to that from our standpoint that we do go against this style of offense so often. We have so many banked reps, so, time on, so much time on task. How much has the plan of the special teams unit helped your guys? You know, especially this last game, it seemed like they were setting you guys up to be able to do things like the sauce blitz and, and things like that. Like, how, how helpful has it been having those special teams play like Yeah, that? it's it's huge. Um, there's obviously a field position component to it when they when they pin a guy back there. You can get you can get aggressive, and we look at that as an opportunity to really get points because three and out there gives our offense the field positions where it should relating to points. Um, but there's also there's a there's an emotional component that people don't talk about enough that special teams brings tackle inside the 20 pin them inside the 10 big hit whatever the case may be when a defense takes the field after a play like that I really believe there's a residual effect on the defense um, so we definitely feed off of their energy obviously feed off the field position stuff too are you, are you calling are you calling that blitz if, if you weren't at the eight they weren't at the eight um, maybe, maybe not. Sauce said that National Anthem you came up to and said said you were calling his number on that. Can you take us back to that moment? Yeah, we we had uh, we had talked about it. We talked about it the night before the game too, as a defense, and uh, it was one of those things where you know it could have been him, could have been DJ. You know, based upon the side it was on, based on the formation they gave us. So uh, all we knew was one of them was going to go. You know, and. Um, He's an interesting uh, young man, uh, Sauce is. You know, it's like a lot of youngsters, they, they get overwhelmed, they get big-eyed, they get, you know, uh, overwhelmed by the moment at times. I haven't seen that from him, you know. You say something like that to him, and it's like he lights up, you know. You, you say about anything to him, he lights up, you know. He's, <laughs> he's just, yeah, he's he's just built that way, yeah. Did you, uh, did you recall what his reaction was when you – because I think he said – something about you, you basically said you put the ball in his hand. I think that's what he said. You said yeah, just a, a quick nod by him and, and the look in his eye let me know he was definitely ready if, if his number was called, for sure. Have you gotten, like you said, Sauce is a rookie. I think when DJ came here, like you had high expectations for him, but what he had done his career was pretty pretty good number two corner. I mean, what they're, the level that they're playing at, is it exceeded even your expectations when you drafted Sauce for year one and then signed DJ as a, as a free agent? Yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard to anticipate what you're going to get from a from a rookie. You know, no matter how well they've played in college, um, it doesn't always translate, especially year one. You know, so the fact that he's had this the success he's had is uh, it's promising. Saying that, there's still a long way to go for him. You know, um, technique, awareness. He just needs time on task. He needs uh, experience, and that will come, and he'll continue to improve. But um, I like where he's at, uh, and I like where he's going. And DJ, same as he's. Uh, He's a guy that just, at that position, he brings this like really unique dog mentality. Like, he doesn't, and, and I'm not, I'm not saying he doesn't have great traits, but he is great makeup. You know, he has this competitive fire where um, you're not going to catch a ball on me, and if you do, it was my shoelace, it was my glove, it was something else, it wasn't because of me. You know, and and I love that. It's just he's, uh, he is. Um, a competitor at the highest level and he's a guy that that you know sometimes corners they're they're out on that island and they don't affect the group as much and they kind of live their own life and that is not the case with him this is a guy that absolutely has the ability to elevate others and brings juice and fire and toughness and swagger so uh, uh excited about having those two guys what are you seeing from from carl lawson and uh was was sunday his, his best 
Yeah, I, I, I definitely think it was the best that we've seen, the best version of him. And saying that, I also believe like he's still got a long way to go. You know, he's a guy that's um, he's getting healthier every day. He's getting more confident every day. He's uh, he's starting to get back to form. And and I think you know, really just knowing his mindset, he's a guy that's never. Um, going to be complacent. He's never happy with where he's at. He's always trying to improve. He's always trying to find the, the inches in his game. So um, I don't think this league, I don't think this organization has seen the best version of him yet. I, I think he's just going to continue to get better. He's the last time he had a guy with seven quarterback hits. It's, it, it's ridiculous. You know, he just, when you really go back and watch it, just, and it wasn't like they were turning protection away and he was getting free run buys. It was, he was beating guys, you know, and, and it wasn't just, um, it was it was a wide array of moves. It was power. It was speed. It was inside moves. It was a counter. It was uh, it just showed you his football IQ and it showed you kind of a glimpse into how hard he works at this thing and his craft and, and the player he's capable of becoming. With with Aaron, when you're playing a quarterback like Aaron, is there when you're going through our practice, is there like a timer almost where you're like, we need to get to him by this point, and if we don't, he's going to find the hole in the defense. Like, and I guess, like, how important is it when you play a quarterback that's good to, to knock him down? Yeah, the, the, the you, you make a good point, but also the D-line would laugh at me because I, I would say that to them, and they would say, when does that ever, yeah. you know, not the case. You know, we always got to get home. We always got to affect the quarterback. Um, but you're right. He's definitely a guy. You give him enough time, uh, and he can, uh, he can make it a long day for you, for sure. With the run defense, Obviously, this week with A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, if you don't stop the run, Rodgers will have those great play action opportunities. So how key is it to stop the run this week? And just what are some things you need to fix from last week? Um, I, I think I can help the guys from a schematic standpoint, just devote more resources to the run game at times. Um, so i got to be better from a play calling standpoint. Um, and uh, and we got to play it better too. You know, we gotta we gotta set edges more consistently. Our pursuit on the backside's got to be better. Our gap discipline um, has to improve. Uh, all those things happen, and you can try to make them a little bit more one dimensional. It's like you said, if their run game is rolling, then their play action game is rolling. Their drop game is going. The, the quick game, all of it is alive. You know, and when all of it's alive with these guys, it can be it can be tough. It can be challenged. So um, trying to eliminate. Uh, a component of the offense helps, for sure.